Hi, this is the overview video on chapter 2, Vectors. This is a pretty short but uh, abstract <laughs> and notation heavy chapter. Uh, what I mean is, as you read through it, uh, you will see a lot of mathematical notation. I think section 2.1 isn't so bad. It's more about distinction between scalars and introduction of the vector notation. But as you get to section 2.2 and 2.3, you are going to see probably more math notation per line than elsewhere in the textbook because it's the mathematical material. And what I have to say for this chapter is this. Um, just read through it once. If uh, as you come across uh, areas like this and your eyes start to glaze over the mathematical expressions, that's fine. Glaze over them and just uh, keep reading through the English lines. And I think reading through all the paragraphs, at least the ones, is meaningful just on its own. And the notation stuff, if you need to come back to that later to um, <laughs> to have a better understanding of it, that's fine. Technical material like this, you should expect to have to read it more than once to get the full understanding of it. So my first recommendation would be just read from cover to cover. Just read through it once. Don't worry so much about understanding everything. Things that you didn't fully get the first time you read it, that's fine. As long as you put in the effort, I think you will gain something out of it. This is a uh, part of what I would refer to as mathematical maturity. That when the technical document that you're reading looks dense, um, it looks uh, sometimes impenetrable, even when they're telling you something that's relatively simple. To uh, When you are faced with something like that, just to persevere through and just to read through it, get what you can understand on that first to read, and then come back again <laughs> for additional understanding later. So with that, uh, what I think uh, would be important for you to make sure that you get out of these uh, sections is one in section 2.1, just the distinction between a scalar, that is a quantity without a direction, and a vector, that is quantity with a direction. And I, I think uh, most people are familiar with the scalar, that's just numbers, real number that you've been dealing with. And the um, Vector is potentially a new quantity if you haven't already seen it in your math class. So I do have a lecture on vectors just to describe um, what it means to have a quantity with a direction and what kind of parameters we need to describe them. And I also, and, and the vector notations, just to getting familiar with the, um, these, um, these really ways of writing things that pack a lot of information into a small area of page. Um, so I have a lecture on that, watch that. <laughs> and I also lecture on the coordinate system. So in this class, we are really only going to be dealing with the 2D systems most of the times, and um, three-dimensional or systems that need a full three-dimensional descriptions. Uh, we try to stay away from them as much as possible. And when you are dealing with two-dimensional systems, uh, let me see here. Um, this diagram here kind of captures everything that's needed to describe that vector in two-dimensional system. And it also gets into the, the two different coordinate systems that you will see, both in the textbook elsewhere and in the lecture. One is the Cartesian system that's based on describing the x and the y components of a vector. And I think uh, a lot of people have already seen that in algebra, trigonometry classes. Whenever you draw x, y coordinate system, you are kind of getting <laughs> geared up to do that. And the other system is the polar system. And although here you are not seeing polar coordinate system being officially defined, you are seeing the elements that's needed for the polar coordinate system. That is the magnitude, that's the scalar aspect of a vector, the, just the size of something, and the direction, the angle, usually measured from the x-axis. Um, so if you have theta with no other explanation, it's usually measured from the x-axis. 
So this diagram kind of captures that, and I also have a lecture that covers that conversion between coordinate representation and your textbook again in its uh, full formal approach. It'll you know, describe all these, um, including I think the yeah polar coordinates. So do read through them, uh, get what you can from your reading, watch the lectures, get what you can from the lectures, and then come back to these as. Uh, it might be helpful and uh, vectors in three dimensions again uh, we're gonna try to stay away from three dimensions as much as we can there's one homework question this week which will cover uh, vector in three dimensions and i have a video that is describe us how to do that in fact uh, so that uh, one question that you will see in the problem set it covers one thing that will be skipping for the most of part so section 2.4 products of vectors um, it covers the scalar product or the dot product or also the inner product and the vector product um, or the cross product or the outer product sometimes. <laughs> um, and uh, we, so your, your textbook covers it here. We are going to be skipping it for the most part until later in the semester when we need them for specific uh, physical idea. So... Um, the dot product or inner product will become important once we introduce work, which comes in when we are talking about energy. That's a few weeks from now. Uh, when we get to that, you will see me cover scalar product. And the vector product or cross product will become important when we do rotational quantities, especially angular momentum, like um, there's uh, something called a precession that you will see in something like, I don't know, 12, 13 weeks. When you get to that part, I will cover pro cross product then. For the time being, I just say, you know, there's no harm in skimming through the section. So skim through the section, but don't worry so much about understanding, applying them. We're going to be skipping it for the most part. And the third and the last important thing I want you to get out of this chapter is... Uh, in section 2.3, Algebra of Vectors, it's probably a fairly abstract uh, section. And what, what they cover in this section, I think you are going to be in a better place to fully understand the significance of all these things when you are taking linear algebra. Um, but for the time being, <laughs> read through it, uh, get whatever you can understand. And what I would say is that this uh, whole algebraic manipulation of symbols, kind of attention to the notation, all these stuff are the things that will be important um, at higher levels, like in notation like this. So you can see all the um, notational details that come in when they write this. So for example, these are written like uh, scalars, you know, uh, not a bold face, no arrows on top, because the components of a vector are really scalars. That's about how much of the component is there. And, you know, this is a vector quantity, and you can note that in the bold face and the arrow there. And the directional aspect of that is talked into these unit vectors, which you can see are vectors because they are bold faced and they have this uh, special unit vector notation of a hat. And um, th these are the kind of things that people with uh, attention to detail, I hope you will love. <laughs> and people who <laughs> think there's just too much there, you know, it's not going to trip you up too much, at least not in this class. You'll have a lot of time to get used to these notational details between this class and the, the upper division classes where those tiny details really do matter. For the time being, I would say, Read it through the section. It's a long section. It will take you some time. Don't worry so much about understanding everything and just uh, do your best. I think reading through it once is a good idea for everyone. And, um, and for things where you might struggle on, especially answering homework questions, watch my homework help videos. So I think that's everything in Chapter 2. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the other lecture videos.